In this video, I'll walk you through the query provided in our workshop for reallocating savings plans and reserved instances based on consumption. This query provides granular data to track how AWS assigns SP and RI upfront and recurring fees to the account that purchased them and compares to the way AWS applies the SP and RI commitments to eligible usage in a consolidated billing organization. Said another way, this allocation method allows you to do a showback or chargeback based on the resources that consumed the commitments. Note, in the cost and usage report, many columns are dynamic, and their visibility in the report depends on the usage of the product in the billing period. For today's demo, let's assume both SPs and RIs are active in the billing period. We'll start by navigating to Amazon Athena. I've pasted in the query from our workshop, and as is the case with all of the queries in this workshop, we'll need to make a couple of edits. First, let's scroll down to the placeholder for our table name. This is the cost and usage report table name that we want to use, and I'll navigate on the left-hand side to our tables, double-click on the table name, and that will replace our placeholder. Next, we'll update our date filters. I found that using the year and month dimensions is a really easy way to narrow in on the service period we want to analyze. So I'll type in year equals 2025 and month equals 1 for January. Now let's walk through the query before looking at the output. We have our different dimensions, such as billing period, usage account ID, product code, and product name. We've included both since the product name dimension most closely matches with Cost Explorer and billing artifacts, while the product code dimension is the standard code AWS uses internally and is typically used for programmatic filtering. We then have this case statement for the purchase option, followed by the savings plan and reservation Amazon resource names, our unblended cost, which reflects the cost of usage on the day it's charged to you, and most importantly for this allocation method, a case statement defining the amortized cost, which will show how the SPRI commitment was consumed across linked accounts for a given period. Now let's run the query. We'll get this out. Put, which will show the SP and RI fees attributed to account that purchased it in the unblended cost column versus the consumption pattern in the amortized cost column. So let's take a look at the savings plan, for example. This savings plan is a no upfront purchase option. And we can see that in the unblended cost column, all of the fees for the commitment are attributed to the owning account. When we compare against where the savings plan was consumed in the amortized cost column, we can see that actually two accounts consume this savings plan. And when we take a closer look, we can see that this link account beginning in 4444 actually consumed the majority, despite the fact that account 3333 owns the savings plan commitment. We can now allocate the savings plan appropriately based on where it was consumed by using the totals in this amortized cost column. Hope this helped to clarify how to implement a consumption-based allocation method using the cost and usage report, and thanks for taking the time to review with me today.